the mystery of God is Christ in you. Now, this will be a very interesting video to the little children that's studying spiritual things. And, and it will declare unto you a truth about Bigfoot Jesus. And you've heard all your life about Bigfoot. I won't tell you the truth about Bigfoot. When America started west, and they hit gold in California. They went west, they fought with Indians, they fought with Mexico. Mountain men, they went through the Rockies. And you know what, they, they, they almost wiped out the buffaloes. They killed so many buffalo, because buffalo coats was great things back east. They kept them warm, it's the warmest coat. They even put them on stagecoaches, that they could wear a buffalo coat on a stagecoach. They killed bear. They kill wolf, they kill beaver, they kill silver fox, they like to wipe it out. But not once did they kill a Bigfoot. You know why they didn't kill a Bigfoot? Because there is no Bigfoot. Not in the flesh. But, but, you know that's goat religion, but there is a Bigfoot. But Bigfoot is paranormal. They, people shot it with shotguns, they chased it, but they can't ever find it because they never skin out a Bigfoot. No. Now, Jesus is like Bigfoot. They just can't find him today because they look for him in books and things. And these mountain men never skin a Bigfoot. No. They never treat him with a dog. They never shot him with a shotgun. No. But he's real. No. And they put him out. We're going to be telling you about Bigfoot Jesus in the church today. So, it's not that Bigfoot isn't real, but he's not in the flesh. And Bigfoot, why don't they call the dogs on him? Why don't they have a real proof evidence? They have proof of everything today. I mean, they're even going out into outer space. And they find things out there. And they they go to the depths of the oceans. They put cameras on all the animals throughout the earth. And they know their patterns and their habits. Why can't they catch a Bigfoot and put a collar on him and follow him? Because in the flesh, he's not real. He's paranormal. And that's what people have done with Jesus today. Jesus is a fable. Not that he's not real, because he is real. But they've made a fable out of him in their mind. they built an image of Jesus in their mind from the Bible, from reading the stories about him. But they don't never find him because they don't never get in the spirit where he can be found. Yes, Jesus came in the flesh, but we no longer know him after the flesh. We only know him after the spirit. You have to find the real Jesus in the spirit. That's the only way they're going to find a Bigfoot is in the spirit. And I don't know why they would want to find him. They say he stinks and he's mean and he's some kind of demon, but they can't find him in the flesh. Jesus is Bigfoot, really. Today. The, story, <laughs> the story of Bigfoot is to scare people out of the woods for various reasons. See, there's no place on earth that you can go that you don't hear a sound. Automobile horn, a train, an airplane, a music, because Satan is the prince of the powers of the air. He don't want you to have a private time with Jesus Christ. No. So these people in the woods, the hunting clubs, they don't want you out there in their church, or they might shoot a picnicker with a high-powered rifle. So they put microphones up in trees to make it sound like Bigfoot. And they scare you out. They're like moonshine. Back in the mountains when I was a boy, the people that sold moonshine, all of a sudden their house was haunted. Headless horsemen. Nobody wanted to go around there. Because they do that to scare you out of there. They scare you. The drug growers, the spirits, everything. They scare you out of the woods. And this is Bigfoot. They scare you into the church. The church preaches Bigfoot Jesus. Yeah, they're preaching a, a fantasy Jesus instead of the real living Jesus. They don't minister the spirit. They minister a story about him. For They say, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So since they don't have the Holy Spirit. Now, if you had a person that was full of the Holy Spirit, they could go in those churches and tell you if Jesus was there or not there. But since you're not Holy Spiritual, you don't have discernment of God, all you have is a story about him, about people that did have, then you need to get a spirit detective, somebody that's a detective that can find out what spirit is in those churches. 
you need a spiritual detective to go in that church and tell you that where two or three of you are gathered in his name, there I am in the midst of him, you need to find out who really is in the midst of him because it isn't Jesus Christ. Now, Bigfoot is real, but he's not real. <laughs> he's paranormal. Satan puts him there because he does not want nobody to be in a place in the earth that his voice is not heard. He's the prince of the powers of the air. Now, if you don't have the Holy Ghost discernment, then never go to a church without a spiritual detective. Listen to me. A spiritual detective, a spiritual medium, a psychic medium, a paranormal investigator, a ghost hunter, or no matter how much it costs you. It'll save you a lifetime of going to church because they'll tell you what spirits are in that church. They're the hounds for spiritual detection of dark spirits. They'll tell you ever forbidden spirits that's in there. They'll tell you ever shadow spirit that's in there. They'll tell you ever, please, do not. All you little children listen to me. I know you're spiritual. You go to church. You know there ain't nothing in there. That's right. But don't go to church and join up with the church without a spiritual medium, a psychic medium, a paranormal investigator, a ghost hunter, take them with you to church if it costs you ten thousand dollars. You'll save money in the long run. But if you're a Holy Ghost person, you don't need all those uh, fleshly, demonic spirit hunters of the devil. All you need is the Holy Spirit in you, and you will know by the Holy Ghost in you that Christ is not there. Why do these Ghost hunters, they find many spirits in there, but why don't they ever find a Holy Ghost spirit? Why don't they ever run into an angel of God? Why don't they ever run into Jesus Christ? Why do they always run into shadow spirits and demons and familiar spirits? Because none of them are here. And when they go to churches, there's even haunted churches. And why in the churches today don't they have the manifestation of the sons of God? Why? Aren't the sons of God allowed to speak in these churches? Why don't they have any proof that Christ is there? Because Christ isn't there. If a spiritual medium went in there, all they would find is flesh. Demonic spirits and spirits of some old preacher or priest that used to be in that church that's still trying to control everything. They're not going to find Christ in there. A spirit detective will tell you what spirits are in there, and they're not of Christ. Now, Bigfoot is real. He's been shot with a shotgun. He's been chased, but you can't never find him because he's paranormal. Now, here's what you got to have. The spirit detectives. Now, I'm a spirit detective. I walk in church and tell you what's in there. Yeah. The when I go in a haunted house, I put my hands out in front of me and I feel them. And the spirits, I said, you don't belong here no more. You're dead. You can't control yourself. I know mm -hmm. because I'm the son of God. Mm -hmm. Now they'll tell you, do not go to church without a, a spiritual medium. These spiritual detectives will tell you if there's a ghost in the church, they are the bloodhounds of the lower spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. I know them. I've talked to them. When a, a psychic reader is setting up and I come by, you know what she does? She shuts down everything. Mm -hmm. You know why she shuts down everything? Because the Holy Ghost is in me. That's right. She don't want to be fighting against God. Yeah. They know. They know. They know. See, they're Satan's teachers. They go into a house. They'll tell you who's in there, who owned the house. And they'll tell you the familiar spirits. They'll tell you the shadow spirits. And they say, learn this, little children, mm -hmm. because if you don't, you'll go through life and you'll, you'll be empty. This is a true thing. Bigfoot, Jesus, is not real, fleshly. This is not the Word of God. No. Bigfoot, Jesus, is not real, naturally. Bigfoot, Jesus, is real, paranormally. Yeah, in a sense that they project an image of Jesus from the Spirit. Now, when you go into these churches, and if you're Holy Ghostal, you'll be looking for the spirit that's in there. And if you're not Holy Ghostal, and you bring your spirit detective in there, you're going to find out what spirit rules that church. Like, Satan has some of these fallen angels that came down with him from heaven that rule all these cities. Well, he also has his ministers of righteousness that rule these churches. 
and you're going to find out what spirit they're of. And when you find out that these ministers, these great ministers with their great books, words that don't have any power, and they have these great robes on, and they talk so holy and wonderful, and they give you all these rituals that you go through. When you find out what spirit they're of, and you find out that they're of the devil, then it's going to say, it can save your soul. You can come out of her. You don't have to pay them devils 10% of your money. You don't have to do what they tell you to do. You don't have to come under their power. You can come out of her and, and seek for the living Christ and he will deliver you. They only use you and put you in spiritual trances using this to deceive you as authority so that they can make slaves out of you, so they can make themselves rich. That is not the spirit of Christ, children. Come out of her and seek for the real living Christ in the spirit, and you might find him. And don't let them fool you and condemn you with all their lying rhetoric. So in essence, what's going to live forever is the spirit within you. The spirit within you is going to live forever. And you must, you must make sure that your soul is in the truth. Now, churches stand empty when an invisible power attacks. You notice 30 some million churches was empty. Would Jesus run? No, Jesus has all power. He's the resurrection. He's our savior. Jesus does not run from boogeymans. He don't run from ghosts. He don't run from Frankenstein. He don't run from werewolves. He don't run from Godzilla. He don't run from King Kong. He don't run from Diggermans or other fables like Bigfoot. Preachers preach a Bigfoot Jesus. He's real, but you can't find him. All right, now, listen to this dumb hill. I was called of God when I was little. I'm one of the last day ministers, witnesses of what's happening in the world. You must make preparations for your soul. When they put a tag on your toe, if you don't have the Holy Ghost in you, you're in serious trouble. You need God in you. That's what I teach you. Ask Jesus today for the Holy Ghost. Now, I always tell you little stories about me when I was in the flesh. Listen to this little story. I lived back in the Appalachian Mountains amongst the Hatfields and McCoys. And we was wild mountain people. We didn't know much back in the 30s and 40s. I'm 83 years old. And we had a big old white house out in the country. We worked on a little farm and raised our corn and taters and beans. And it's hot summertime. And my older sister, Jean, we had a banister around the porch of the house. And Jean was sitting up on the porch there, and all of them were sitting around in hot summertime. We didn't have air conditioning. We was lucky to have a fan. I don't think we even had a fan. And the old mare was sitting over in a field out there, you know. And well, I'd, I'd been a shoeshine boy in town, and I knew about a cowboys. But I only knew about them by reading about them and hearing about them. And I told Jean, I said, Hey, Jean, she's older than I was. She's my older sister, her and Monette. And I said, See that wild horse over here on the mountain? I was playing like a cowboy. See, I was playing like a cowboy. That's what people do in church. They read a book about it or read something about it, and they play like they're Christians. So I played, I said, now watch this, Gene. Watch this great cowboy. I was 10, 12, 14 years old. I wasn't very big. But I'd seen them in the movies and, and in comic books. So I got me a rope out of the barn and I went up there to the old mare. You know, I said, hey, look at me. I'm a wild cowboy. And so I, the old mare just stood there. You know, she thought I was taking it in to get something to eat, maybe to plow or something. And I roped the old mare off. And I knew how to make a halter out of a rope. And I made a halter out of a rope. And I was, get, I was doing entertainment for the family that afternoon. And I'd read about a cowboy. But I wasn't a real cowboy. <laughs> a real cowboy understands horses. He can make a horse obey him. He knows how to herd cattle. I didn't know nothing. All I knew was a comic book. And I was hollering at him, and I, I saddled up. I, well, it wasn't saddled. I wore gray mare. I was bareback. So I was riding 
In the mountains, you don't make a straight path no more. It ain't level ground. You go round and round the hill but with a path to get down to the barn. So I was riding old mare down through that bareback, and I said, Hey, look at me. Hey, I'm a cowboy. <laughs> hey, look at me. I'm a Christian. I got a book. So I was going down through there. And hillbillies are the nuttiest people in the world. Where the fence come down from the mountain to, to make the barn in a fenced area, there's a board coming out from the fence. And they didn't cut it off like some wise person do. It, 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 they just left the board. Well, when I come back, the old mare was kind of trotting. And I raised up my foot to miss that board that was sticking out. And I went off the horse. <laughs> I went off the old gray mare. Well, all I had was a hold of that holder that I'd made for it. And I was hanging on right in front of her. I was right in front of that old gray mare. And she was running for the barn. She thought I was going to feed her or, or plow some ground or something. And she wasn't going to stop. And I was running backwards in front of that old mare. Oh, did you ever smell the breath of a horse? Oh, it's awful. She was breathing right at me. And I was running backwards to keep her from running over me. And then she was headed for the barn and she wasn't going to stop. And you know all I heard? I heard Gene and one it and all the whole family up on the porch was hollering. You know, Roy Rogers was a big cowboy, or Gene Ultra was a big cowboy back in the 40s. And I heard him hollering, Ride him, Roy! <laughs> Ride him, Gene! Hang in there, cowboy! You know, and I was breathing that air, that horse was about to run over me. I had to keep jumping up in the air to keep him running over me. And... I learned that day that I wasn't no cowboy. I learned that reading a book don't make you no Christian. And I learned that it takes power to be a Christian. You have to have God in you. That's just electricity in you. That's what's kept me for 83 years. He called me when I was little. And I wasn't much of a Christian in them days because I say, I say to myself, if I get out of this, I'm going to kill Gene and the rest of them <laughs> for life to me. People don't want to see you till you get in trouble. They like, you know when they used to like to see me? When the police surrounded me and put me in jail for preaching the Bible tonight. They like to see that. They like to see me in trouble. And that's what people like to see, Chris. They like to see them hanging on the cross. That's what they like. And I'm still here, children, because I'm telling you the Bible's an idol is the mark of the beast. And I'm telling you a truth that only I will tell you on earth. The rest of these people will not do it because it costs them their life. It's cost me my life. And I love you. I want you to know the truth. And this power that fell on the day of Pentecost is in me. I still feel it today as I did when he started in. That will give you power. The kingdom of God is in power, not words. And remember this, this hillbilly ain't no cowboy. Sons